Uh, Joining us now, Democratic uh, Representative from Wisconsin, Congressman Ron Kind, and Democratic Representative from Connecticut, Congressman Jim Hines. They're both members of the new Democrat coalition, the largest moderate group in the House of Representatives. Very good to have you both on the show this morning. Talk about the coalition. Watch your... Well, I tell you, it's a great coalition, about 55 members strong, a group of moderate centrists, pro-growth, pro-innovation Democrats trying to find a way forward, the common ground that's been elusive in Washington, and bipartisanship shouldn't be a four-letter word. We need more Why is of it this. So hard? Well, it's been difficult, especially the last couple of years. I mean, too many of our colleagues coming to Washington have this my way or no way at all attitude, and that's not conducive to a democracy that needs to function well. What's the well. failure on both sides? Well, you see it with the president's budget proposal, right? The president deliberately, as a matter of strategy, tries to put down a position that most people, if they abide by what they've been saying for a long time, is a reasonable compromise, and of course he gets obliterated by both sides of the aisle. It's people, you know, there's money, there's attention, there's all sorts of things in taking the hard line. Not a lot of incentive to operate the way Ron is, is talking about, which is, you know, a more policy centrist, moderate approach to things. So, so help, let's help define this, this, this moderate, this moderation that you guys embody. Um, how are you different from, let's say, the mainstream thinking on economic issues in your own part? Well, I'd say in the mainstream, Republicans are a group of moderates that we're trying to help and work with. And the truth is, what, less, about, what about on the Democratic side? Though I'm trying to figure out your moderate compared to, let's say, the, the, the Nancy Pelosi's the, the, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not even sure I would put her. You know, she's a, as you know, she's a, a leader and operator. There's a, there's right. a level of pragmatism there. Right. The, the, the difference may be this, Joe, which is, you know, how do you think? about Social Security and Medicare? Do you say absolutely no changes of any kind ever? Mm -hmm. uh, which some folks in our, on our side of the aisle do. Right. Or do you say, hey, these are important programs that a lot of people care about, and the simple math makes them unsustainable in a 30-year period, so we are going to make some changes. They've got to be fair, they've got to be equitable, but we've got to talk about the nature of those changes. So, so, for example, the President's proposal to go to change CPI, you guys would be on board for. How about raising the Medicare uh, eligibility age from 65 to 67, which is something he's toyed with but well, hasn't yet endorsed? Richard, we all know the secret I'm, is, uh, I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the secret in Washington is getting health care costs there. under control. And the way to do that, and the new Dems have been very proactive on this, is changing the incentives in the health care system so it is value or outcome based and not volume based payments. It's this fee for service system that's bankrupting our nation right now. So we're interested in transformative reform within the health care system, not just cost shifting. When you start talking about raising the eligibility age, that's just cost shifting the money uh, around the system and not getting at the heart of the problem, which is better outcomes, value, not volume, and getting a better bang for the duck that a buck for the that we're yeah, spending. But you're not going to solve the whole problem with uh, with changing how we deliver health care. I grant you there's a lot to be done there, but at the end of the day, you've got a system that's basically paying out three times as much in benefits uh, to every American than from what they're putting in. So there's something else has to happen. Well, well, but, but let, me, let, me, let me just clarify something. Steve said he would assume that all of us would uh, would jump on board with change CPI. I'm, I'm not sure that's true. Look, uh, but what we would do, I think, as New Democrats, is say, let's, let's talk about what we're really talking about here. Change CPI um, might actually reduce the uh, cost of living adjustments for a widow living on $15,000 a year. How do we feel about that? On the other hand, it'll change the cost of living adjustments for somebody who's got an income of $5 million a year. How do we feel about that? You know, that's the discussion that we want to have rather than taking these sort of, you know, uncompromising, no way, my way or the highway stands on, on any proposal. But, but on, on two issues that we brought up, uh, you've pushed back on raising the retirement age and you appear to be pushing back even on the position the president's take taken on chain CPI. Well, I don't think we're pushing back on either. We're saying no. let's have a more honest conversation about it. Raising the retirement age, I put a tie on to go to work. If you ask me to work, you know, an extra year, 67 to 68 or whatnot, I sit at a desk, I can probably pull that off. What about a firefighter who carries, you know, 60 pounds of gear up a ladder? You know, th this is the discussion we have to have. And and if we don't find ways to broaden the discussion, we, 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 you have, we're, we're not going to get a deal done. So hard. I mean, that some of this stuff is pretty basic, isn't it? I the numbers don't add up. Well, we're, we're, we're not saying, I think we're being very clear that these programs need to be reformed. Yeah. The question is, how do we talk about them? Do we say CPI, uh, change CPI, no way? Or do we say, let's, let's unpack it? You know, do we, do we say, as the Republicans are saying, absolutely not, not one more dime of revenue? Or do we say, let's look at the tax code, where we spend $1.3, $1.4 trillion? But what we're doing is sitting in the middle of those conversations going, we can't decide how to have it. 
Yeah. But you know, I mean, there's something that I think there's common ground on. It's something you've been talking about and trying to convince Joe about. And that's yeah. we all have a responsibility in the healthcare system to do things better. Eating better, exercising more, not smoking. You know, unless we exactly. start changing the culture of all that, we're going to be playing catch up with healthcare and, costs. And, and aging just like Steve said, I know. we agree. Let's be healthier. That will drive down the healthcare costs. But let's just be honest here. We're not going to save Medicare unless we actually do a lot of things. We're going to have to give medical providers less. We're going to have to give beneficiaries less. Yes, I just said it. Hold on. Let's let that ring. Wow. Beneficiaries are going to have to get less. But We're going to have to tax rich people more uh, on their benefits. He just said we're, that. We're too. going to have he's to. not running again. We're, no, no, you know what? I think he's talking Americans know this is the mm -hmm. truth. They know it's the truth. So no, listen, but, I salute you guys for what you're trying to do, trying to find this space. But listen, I'm a hungry guy. You've got to give me. Let's do this now. Just throw some. Give me some meat right here, something I can go away with, because right now you're sounding kind of... Let me tell you, we can get better care flimsy. and a better price. And the fact that the We're Institute, part of that. The Institute of Medicine just came out with a report that showed we spent over $750 billion last year in the health care system on right. stuff that didn't work. Right. It didn't improve patient care. Right. That's where we should be focused okay. when we're but, talking but about health care reform. Come here and you're talking about cutting waste, fraud, right. and abuse. No, we're not. We trotted that stuff it's, out It's more than that. No, we're not. It's we're not. You're all okay. Wait, hold a second. Hold on, waste, fraud, and abuse saying you can have some of the spectrum, right? No, 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 look, it, it, it annoys Sorry. me when people bring up waste, fraud, and abuse. That is the, uh, the easy exit so, for the politicians. So, the, let's make talk a about hard decision. Yeah. So, tell us some specific things that you would change in order to deal with this deficit. We're going to reduce defense spending because with the war and everything else, we're $700 billion a year. That's more than every other country on the planet combined sense. We are going to reduce health care spending. Say, we're going to reduce health care spending by changing the model. And yes, Joe, you're right. At the end of the day, not every American is going to be able to get everything they want out of a system that we and all we need pay to do into. This by promoting an innovation agenda so that we remain the most innovative and competitive and creative nation in the world. And that's what's getting cut right now in these in these federal Steve budgets. Steve Radner brought up uh, a point. Again, it's just it's like, you know, some Republicans are science deniers, some Democrats are math deniers. The math's pretty simple, isn't it, Steve? The average the American at, at Medicare age pays in $122,000, gets back $387,000. You're not going to innovate your way out of that it's problem. It's a three to one ratio. Americans are getting older by the day we're well, living long. Steve, you just saw what the Congressional Budget Office came out. They reduced Medicare spending by over four hundred billion dollars in the next eight years, and they're trying to find out if that's the structural reforms that are taking place right now, or a remnant of the recession that we're coming out of. But four hundred billion in savings is moving the dial. Four hundred billion in savings is great, but we have unfunded Medicare liabilities of something like thirty-five trillion dollars. Well, not no, billion. Nobody, trillion nobody dollars. Is not the, the, the argument we're making is that there are a lot of fundamental reforms. Look. What's the definition of inefficiency? The definition of inefficiency is when you spend two times per capita, as we do in this country, more than any other industrialized country, and get worse results, right? That, that gives us, that's interesting math, too. That gives us a lot of scope for efficiency. We all agree on that, but we also, I think, at least this side of the table, agrees that you're going to have to go past that. They're going to have to be higher co-pays, higher premiums, deductibles, means testing for elderly. All that kind of stuff is going to have to happen. And I think most of us are all in, but what we're saying, and maybe this is where the Democrat part of the new Democrats can is, Yes, by all means, let's have that discussion, but let's not hammer the vulnerable, the elderly, those people who really can't afford it. That's all we're saying. Okay, listen, let me, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Right. Just you guys have convinced me. <laughs> I am not going to support publicly, if I ever run for office again, hammering the elderly. <laughs> Hold on. Promise? That was, that was my, actually, that was my number one. I, was, I had said, number one, if you ever run again, hammer the elderly. Nope. I'm, okay, <laughs> that's off. So, see, we're making progress. Now, when you guys say I support the president on chain CPI, and I think, I think well, listen, I think we, we need is accurate measure and cost of living adjustments. Right. As we can get, and if we can't have an honest conversation in Congress about that, then we are in trouble as far as entitlement reform. And, and you know, the president's going to be proposing that in his budget. He's been there for a long and time. See, we're making progress. Yeah. Now, when you guys say I support the president on chain CPI, and I think, I think well, listen, I think we, we need as accurate a measure and cost of living adjustments right. as we can get. And if we can't have an honest conversation in Congress about that, then we are in trouble as far as entitlement reform. And, and, you know, the president's going to be proposing that in his budget. He's been there for a long and time. And you guys, do you support that? Well, I tell you, we are looking at that to see whether or not it makes sense. But, again, the president's out there proposing it. We're waiting to see where the Republicans are going to bring some of their reform 
ideas to the table. Uh, 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 and they've been silent, Joe. I mean, they really haven't been that constructive. They, they, you know what? It's funny. They went if you're protecting the oldest retreat. seniors, you're going to get a lot. Of, if you're protect, sorry, not the oldest. If you're protecting the poorest seniors, you'll get Democrat support. Democratic that's, that's support good. to change the You know, the yeah. thing is, just for the Republicans, if I can fit my own party for a second, they went on a retreat a while back, and they all have laryngitis. So they're, they're going to start talking about this pretty soon, I'm confident. All right. Okay. Um, so you you're basically you're saying report? carve out, though. If you carve out, you were talking about, for instance, blue-collar workers. You have a carve out for blue collar workers on raising the retirement age, or some of these other uh, some of these other areas where we're talking about uh, changing benefits. You think that may be the key to moving forward with real entitlement reform? You know, carve outs are fine politically in that, but what we need is structural, holistic reform within the healthcare system, especially. We need to change the way it's delivered why, why and why how we, we pay get that? for it. We, we had to talk about healthcare reform for two years on this show. I thought I was going to kill myself. <laughs> so we talk about it for two years. It's all Washington talks about for two years, and three weeks after it passes, people start coming on this show and saying, well, you know, we're going to have to reform health care. What was that well, about? No, it's in the process. I mean, these reforms are, are being rolled out. You're not going to change the way we pay for one-fifth of the entire U.S. economy overnight. Why it's going to be a period of transition. The last time, we had a two-year debate. Why we started, and that's why people come back and say we have more to do. Look, I think most people would tell you that that was a pretty solid insurance reform, right. but that it didn't go far as nearly as far to Steve's point as it needs to an underlying uh, delivery model reform. We've got a long way to go there. A lot of things to do.